Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. So last week we uh, started the series on um, Microsoft Form Recognizer, how to use it, how to integrate with it. If you have uh, not watched that video yet, please feel free to go to my channel and watch that before. Because this week we are just going to talk about integrating it with custom models. Last week we have already covered what it is, benefits of using it, what are the different scenarios you will use it in and how do you integrate with the pre-built models, which is something that Microsoft provides out of the box. So this week we'll be focusing on building some custom model, which means that you can scan from any documents um, which you might have, which you might want to extract data from and automate your downstream processes. So that's what we are going to focus today. So before we start training our instance here, so just a reminder that you need to have a running Microsoft Form Recognizer instance. You can use the free tier if you uh, wish to do so. But if you want to use uh, more than two pages, if you want to scan more than two pages in one go, you'll have to uh, move to one of the paid tiers, which is anyways cheap. But also what you can do is you can make multiple calls to achieve the same, which will be slower. So we covered that topic last week. This is just more of a reminder to you that we need to use this endpoint and we need to use one of the keys which you had created when you had created this form recognizer instance. Now, once you have that, you need to again move to the form recognizer studio, which we covered last week as well. Uh, here, this time we are going to use um, the custom extraction model. So we'll go here, click on this, this will ask you to create this um, project. So if you see here, create a project, there's an option here. I would say my test custom model. So we move forward here, we'll ask for a subscription, which is my subscription. Um, and then what are the different resources uh, that we want to use, right? So my subscription, now the resource group, my test, here it goes, okay. And here it asks which API version you want to use. So what is this, right? So uh, Microsoft keeps updating its backend API to integrate with uh, the form recognizer. You can choose uh, any of the ones. So normally it's a good practice to use the general availability one. So we are going to use this uh 831 2022 so we move forward here so the next step now uh since we are trying to train uh form recognizer we need to upload certain documents that we wanted to see and train itself and of course we'll help it to uh, get trained so here you need to select a blob storage where you will be uploading your documents uh securely and use those documents in form recognizer studio to teach the form recognizer how to read and what to read from those documents. So I will use my subscription here. Uh, my FR test, I will create a new storage. I will say FR data repo. Now we move to a region. We select India, West India. So we select a region, we select a tier, choose the cheapest one. And then we say the container name. So fr blog. Okay. And here we say data free. Continue. So uh, once we do this, we'll create the project here. It'll take a few seconds because it's also creating the storage account this time behind in Azure. So finally, here our location to upload a document, the blob is ready now. So we'll close this and now it's saying you can upload a document that you want to train. But before I uh, start uploading these documents and start the training, let me show you what I've done here really. Okay, so I have these five, I've created five of these documents. If you open these, so these are a simple feedback form which I have created so that we can use that for our uh, testing. So I have created five versions of these. If you see, all of these are a uh, little different from each other, right? So uh, here we are asking three questions basically and getting the responses from one to five, okay? So for training form recognizer, you at least need to have five documents. 
So here I have these five documents which I'm going to use for training purposes. So let's move back to our training now. So I will upload all these five files. So now here we'll upload all the five files which I just showed you. So from here to here. So now what we'll have to do is we'll have to run layout and we'll have to label them. So let's run the layout first. So, so what it is doing here is it is trying to first read the document, what it is, and then it will allow you to tag and make it learn what field needs to be mapped to which variable in our response JSON. So let's give it a minute to do that. So as you can see, the layout running process is now complete and all these have now converted with this green dot. That means Microsoft Form Recognizer has gone through the documents and knows what's the content of it, but it doesn't know how to convert it to a JSON yet. So that's what we are going to teach it now. So we select the document here. Now, if you see here, there are three questions, right? So what I will do is I will take these as individual groups. Okay, so this one, I would say Q1, option one, OP1. Okay, and I will say this is a selection mark. If you see, it's saying it's selected because now it can identify that the value of this field is already selected. Same way, I will continue doing the same Q question one, option two which is again a selection one. Question one, option three. Oops, there's a selection mark again. Question one, option four. And question mark, question one, option five. Which is also a selection mark. So I will do the same thing for the remaining three as well. The only difference is when we go to the next one, I will call it question two, option one. So I will just complete the rest. So now we are done with mapping all of these with their corresponding name, which we are going to use in our structured document that we'll get as a response from the OCR that will happen here, right? So now um, here there is a name tag as well. So we'll call this name as name so that we know that who gave us this response. So we'll call it a field. Now, what we'll have to do is we'll have to do the same thing for at least five forms. So we did it for one, we'll have to do the same for remaining four forms. So I will again fast forward this process and we'll talk again once we are done with this. Okay, one more thing I just wanted to um, highlight here. So once you have done this mapping for at least one of the documents, right? you'll see that all the possible keys are already here. These are all the labels, right, which we want to use. And then what you can do is you can just select and select the respective one. So it will automatically get tagged to it. You need to make sure that all the documents, between all the documents, these key names should be all common. But as a quick shortcut, you can just select this and select this. So that way it will be much easier rather than typing it again and again. Okay, so all of our mappings are now done. If you see, it has this green tick against it. That means all the fields that we wanted to train here are already done. If you want to review any of those, you can over here and you will see the color code here will highlight here as well. If you see this, okay, so this is trained to this. Okay, this way you can quickly spot check if you want, but always make sure that all the tags that you have, you at least have trained it for five instances. Okay, so here I see there's a problem. You see this is showing something else. So this is Q2P1. So let me fix this real quick. 
So this is Q2P1. Okay, and there's one more line here. Q2P2, it has a value. So we are good here. Okay, so once this is done, what we will do is we will have to finally train this document. So to train, we need to give a name of the model. So we will call it survey form. Okay, uh, you can give a description if you want, but it's not mandatory. Here, there are a couple of options. So one is neural, another is template. So which one to use? So you will use template if the structure of your document is very constant in nature. If my document would have been that, okay, you know what? This can grow in size, right? And it, it will have those three questions, but there could be some text here, which could be variable in size. So the form is not fixed in length. In those scenarios, to tackle those scenarios, you will use the neural model. If your document is very well structured, like in our case, we will use template model. So now here, I will put the model ID again, um, survey form. And now we will use the template model and train it. So it says that the training is in progress. You can go to models where it will show that what is the status of your training. Now the training is complete here, you can see. So what you can do is you can start testing it immediately. So you select this. If you see here, it will tell you what all fields you have trained it against. Okay, and the accuracy is like, depending on the amount of training that you have done, how confident it is to fetch the data that it will find the data correctly. So now we'll hit test here. And here it will ask you to upload a file. So what I've done here is I have a PDF here, which is a different document. Okay, and if you see, there's a lot of ink or, or printing that is coming from the page behind it. I intentionally did it to make sure we don't test with a happy path and test something which is really tough to read for the form recognizer and check how it is doing. So I will use this document and see how the test goes. So I will select this from here. Once the document is there, you just run analysis. So here what it's doing is it's hitting the survey form model and trying to extract data from it. So now you see the response is here. Now, if you see, it has detected it correctly that this is question one, option one, option two, option three, and option four is selected. If you see the content there, and option five is unselected, same way, this is question two, question two, option three is selected. Very good, these are unselected. Question three, option one, option two, option three, four is selected that's correct and it is unselected and here we have martin uh, as the name which is also extracted correctly so this shows that our training was successful and it is able to extract the data that we wanted to extract so now um like the last time right when we in in the previous video we saw that how do we get this back to our code where we can programmatically access this. If you see the result also comes in a JSON format, the same way we saw in the last video, where you can extract the data out from this. And then uh, of course it gives you some sample codes which you can use um, for writing your code, okay? So again, as last time, we will copy this whole JSON and then we'll try to see what's coming in the JSON. Okay, so I have the tree view of the JSON. I just put it here and then analyze result has the data here which we want first is the content which is nothing but the entire document which we are not really interested in so we will go to the documents so this was only one document so now what we'll do is we will go to fields that's where our data is so if you see question one option one Type is selection mark and value is unselected. Question one, option four. Again, I mean, these may not come in the same order that you want, but it doesn't matter because you are going to use it programmatically and these will be all variables or array elements for you. So in this fashion, you will get all the fields that we had mapped in the document 
and you can go ahead and use it in your C sharp code, which we are going to do next. So for coding part of things, it will be similar to what we did last time. You need to go and add the package for Azure AI form recognizer from NuGet. Uh, if you want to see how to do it, uh, just go watch the previous video which we had. Here, what we are doing is we are doing something very simple. We are um, to support if, if in case you don't have a paid subscription, um, if you want to still process multiple documents, we are showing how to do that. So what we are doing is here, we are running a loop. In that loop, we are trying to get the documents um, which I have placed in my temporary folder. Okay, so these documents have uh, at the end one, two, three, four, five in their number. So that's what I'm scanning here. That's what I'm reading here, and then um, sending to form recognizer, and then I'm just printing the uh, fields out of it. Okay, so once we, if we can access the fields here. You can again, uh, if you watch my previous video on this, uh, I showed you how to put it in an object and use um, array to Excel uh, library to write it to an Excel file. So uh, you can refer to that video to check how to do that. But for now, we will just check if we can access all these five documents data extracted um, in our response. Okay. So the program ended here. If you see here what happened. So this is the first document that we had uh, with the name of Tom. Let me quickly double check that. Yes, it's reading from our documents. So that's correct. So we have Tom, Jason, um, John, Mark. So I think I used the same document twice. So it's both of them are Mark. But anyways, so what we are trying to say here is we are able to extract all the fields. Uh, and then, uh, as I said, as I showed in the previous video, you can always copy the values, the extracted values to another object like this and populate this object and use the array to Excel um, library to write it to an uh, Excel file. I will not repeat that code. Maybe something that you guys can try. If you have doubts how to use it, go watch my previous video and you will find it how it works. Hope this video was helpful to you. If so, I'd really appreciate if you guys can please subscribe to my channel because that helps a lot. It doesn't cost you a penny, but helps my channel to grow. Thank you so much and you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.